I'm Stan and I want to talk to you about people who make me nervous. Now in the past they were people who had beliefs different to mine but now they are people who are sure they are right. Now people who are sure they are right about religion or politics or science or anything really make my hair stand on end. In my last weeks at Theological College, a professor brought the exiting students together and he said he would tell us how to make a success of our first time as minister in a church. And he said, you must find a Lazarus. Now, Lazarus is a person in the Bible who Jesus brought out of the tomb and everyone was amazed and they believed in him. So what he was saying is, wherever you go in your town or community, there is somebody who is an absolute hopeless person. They may be addicted or they may be beating their wives or whatever. Now, go to them with the love of Jesus. Offer them salvation through Jesus. Help them to change their lives and then the whole community will notice. In the town of my first church, there was a person just like the professor described. He was a drunkard. He beat his wife. He used all his money to drink. He was a terrible father and everyone in that small town knew him. But guess what? Before I could get to him, he was converted. He became a changed man, a really changed person, a good father, a good citizen, and all the town noticed. But the problem was he was converted by the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, my training had taught me that I was right and Jehovah's Witnesses were wrong. I visited a lady and she was full of joy and I asked her, why are you so happy at the moment? Well, she said, it's like this. My son left this town to go to Surfers Paradise and he took his wife and small children and they lived in a caravan park in surface paradise and they partied every night. Finally, his wife, my daughter-in-law, left him and went into a small council flat somewhere in the Gold Coast. And she said, I cannot stand this party life anymore and it's not good for me, it's not good for the children. One day there was a knock at the door and there stood two young men with white shirts and ties. They were Mormon missionaries from somewhere in the United States. And they said to her, we would like to come in and pray for your family. She said, you would? And she said, come in, come in. And by the time they got into her small lounge room, she was already kneeling down by the couch, asking them, pray, pray for me and my children. And they did. And her life changed. And she became a Mormon. And it was a tremendous move towards health and well-being for her and eventually her husband who was so critical of Mormons and so critical of their pious life he also became a Mormon and the family were a wonderful family and the lady I was talking to showed me the latest photo. I don't think Jesus asked us to judge other people people from different cultures, even people from different religions. I don't think he asked us to think we're superior to others. I think he asked us to love one another. 
and to respect one another. Part of my training to be a minister, and in my case a Baptist minister, was to find out what was wrong with other people's beliefs, what was wrong with other religions and other sects, and to find ways that I could argue with them and help them believe that I was right. And in my life, I never was successful, not even once, in doing this. When we see others, let's look at them with eyes of love, not trying to prove that we are right and they are wrong, but finding in their heart love and responding to it as, uh, as brothers and sisters. So when I started saying people make me nervous, People who are sure they're right make me nervous and people who are open to love and to love one another and to love others of different backgrounds, I think they're kind of the hope of the world, the way of the future, the way of future healing. God bless you.